uh, we're going to be, it's a matching question. And the problem says, match the term to its working definition given in lecture. <clears throat> and uh, it's a little messy here, but let me see if I can divide up my terms here. The first term is an instantaneous dipole in one particle induces a dipole in a neighboring particle. The two dipoles are attracted to each other. Uh, and I might as well add to that for approximately 1 over 10 to the 15 seconds. So very, very short time. For A, and what I've got is I've got number 1, 2, 3, and 4 over here. Uh, and can anybody tell me 1, 2, 3, or 4, or by name, which one is A? Forces. Thank you, Selden. Yes, London dispersion forces. Uh, dispersion forces is one name for them. London dispersion forces is another name. LDF is an abbreviation. I will take any of these answers uh, all the time for these. And I will say that especially with um, dispersion forces or London dispersion forces or LDF, um, that if you look on the internet, be careful because there are some different ways of talking about these forces. And so one common term that you don't see on any of my materials are Van der Waals forces. And so again, I'm happy to talk about what um, all the terms mean and how things have changed. But uh, dispersion forces is what I'm referring to by this instantaneous dipole induced dipole um, attraction or force between particles. Uh, okay, uh, how about B? A permanent dipole in one particle attracts the permanent dipole of a neighboring particle. Somebody else, please. Uh, which one of these? One, two, three, or four? Or by name. I'll drink some tea while I'm waiting. Is it dipole, dipole forces? Thank you, Daryl. It is. So, and actually, I guess I can uh, list. So, well, anyway, you guys, uh, uh, I don't have to. Well, yeah, let's do it. So, A, 2 is A, 3 is B, dipole, dipole forces. Um, C, somebody else, an especially strong version of dipole, dipole forces that results when hydrogen is covalently bonded to a small, highly electronegative atom such as nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Which one of, so you only have two choices left, one or four. <clears throat> Somebody else, please. Number one. Thank you, hydrogen bonding. Thank you, Irvin. <clears throat> and then, of course, ionic bonding is ion-ion forces. D. <clears throat> and in addition to discussing what they are, I wanted to review their strength order. And uh, I'll start by saying here that I'm going to be talking specifically if the particles or if the molecule, well, let's say this. So uh, if the particles, and by particles I mean could be an atom, could be a molecule, could be an ion. Right, these particles could be any of these three. If the particles have approximately the same molar mass, um, then the order of the intermolecular forces will be <clears throat> from weakest to strongest. First, LDF, then dipole, dipole. Then, 
then H bonding, and then ion ion. And uh, the way I think about this is that, um, so well, let's start actually on the strongest side. So ion ion would be something between say an Na plus and a Cl minus. And ion ion involves full charges and permanent charges. So full permanent charges. And I'll scoot that up a bit. Full permanent charges. And by full, I just mean whole numbers. So maybe that's another way of saying it. On the other side of the weakest ones, those involve instantaneous dipoles where a dipole is a partial charge. So uh, instantaneous. dipole or partial charges or partial charge and so instantaneous is contrasted with permanent permanent means always there instantaneous means only there for an instant and what does that instant mean well I said approximately 1 over 10 to the 15th second which is a femtosecond it does not get much shorter than that. Uh, and then in between, we have dipole-dipole, which is uh, permanent part dipoles or permanent partial charges, permanent dipoles. Where again, it's partial charge. That's what a dipole is, it's a partial charge. And then we have hydrogen bonding, which as it says, is an especially strong version of dipole-dipole. So the only difference here is I'm gonna write permanent large dipoles. And then in parentheses, I'm gonna write permanent lar or, uh, large partial charges. So permanent uh, large dipoles. And large dipoles just means large partial charges. So uh, any questions with what I have down here so far? Professor? Yes, yeah, yeah, my question is not related to this question. To, the, to, to what you are doing now. My question is, do we have to come back at three o'clock? Do you have to come back at three o'clock? Yes. Okay. That uh, means... What's that, that, Aziz? Mean that, sorry? Go ahead, Aziz. I said, does that mean that we, you assign some work for us to do, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So, and then I want to add one other thing uh, right now, and we'll talk more about these later. So, um, LDF increase as molar mass increases. So, as, uh, and what happens is, LDF, even though they're the weakest, if you get large enough uh, mo uh, molecules or particles, then you will get relatively strong intermolecular forces. But what we try and do as much as possible in this course is um, if we're going to be making comparison between LDF and the others as much as possible, and it's not always perfect, we try and keep the molar mass as similar as possible. And uh, the big thing you need to think of when you do LDF and molar mass is when you talk about something called polymers. And polymers can have thousands of carbons. 
so they can have very large molar masses. And there's sort of a separate thing here. And again, if you come to office hours, I'm happy to talk about polymers, um, but they're not part of the material we're gonna cover for this class. So anyway, and but if you look over the questions, you'll see as much as possible, and it's not always perfect, but, um, but I'll try and keep the molar mass the same as much uh, as possible. Professor? Daryl, go ahead. Um, on the lecture notes, I remember you given the, is it bond forces, something like that, and ionic bonds were the strongest. That's right. As it is here right now. But then I remember that diamond is the hardest substance and it's formed with carbon atoms, right? Yes. So if carbon to carbon is a covalent bond, why is, or how come is diamond the strongest substance? I mean, the, the bond should be stronger with something with an ironic compound, right? Okay, so that I'm, I, I don't think I phrased the question right, but do you get where I'm going with this? I think so. Let me see if I can try and answer it. So um, what? Uh, so let's say we're talking about sodium chloride versus diamond. Okay, and uh, what we know is that what I just said is that sodium chloride has ion-ion uh, -ion forces for its intermolecular forces, right? And that ion-ion forces are the strongest of the intermolecular forces. Yes. And um, so I think here is the key thing about intermolecular forces. They are the forces between different objects or different particles. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so you can talk about the IMF between a CH4 and another CH4 molecule, or a sodium ion and a chloride ion. Diamond, on the other hand, so all the carbons are covalently bonded. So it's like it's one big molecule And so that, that's the difference is IMF will always tell, I will always ask the question or it, it's always part of the question is how does one molecule or ion interact with another molecule or ion? Um, and diamonds are some very interesting stuff. Carbon in general is very interesting. Uh, but diamond, each carbon is bonded to four other carbons. in a tetrahedral geometry. And so then this carbon, again, it gets pretty complicated. And so there's just all these bonds that are uh, tetrahedral and covalent. So that's what I mean by it's like one big molecule. And if you wanna break this carbon from this carbon, you've gotta break a covalent bond. And that's not, let's, I mean, the short answer is that's not easy to do. Um, but uh, I don't know if, Daryl, that sort of gets at what your question was about. Yes, it certainly does. Good. Uh, yeah, I mean, and uh, carbon's amazing because there's the diamond form, then there's graphite, and then there's something called Buckminster fullerene. And Buckminster fullerene is C60, and it's a soccer ball-shaped molecule, which really does tell you which sport is the best sport, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but that's just my opinion, I guess. Um, graphite, anyway, so carbon is an amazing material, uh, and in fact, that's why they have whole courses just based on the study of the bonding of carbon. It's called organic chemistry. I don't think anybody in this class will end up taking it, but it is fascinating material. Um, anyway, so uh, a little off um, script there, but 
always, I mean, there's so much, there's so much that's interesting, I think, about chemistry and science in general. And uh, we only have so much time. Uh, 